Good morning. Good morning. What time is it? Why do you like to start at this time? 5.30 and we start because we backtrack from when daily mass is. So we know when daily mass is and then we say, okay, well, then what time do we need to milk in order to have all the buckets finished, in order to have the milk skimmed. This is a day in the life of the Doherty's. I lived like them for a day and it was wonderful. The night before, we, we talked about the Mass. I didn't grow up Catholic, this is new to me, I'm just keeping an open mind. And Sean shared with me that Mass, this daily gathering in, in the church building is, it's only a fraction of a taste of the glory, really, of perhaps what heaven will be like. The night before this day, what got us really excited is when we made that connection of this. There is something special about in, in, in a human desire to connect to something more, to connect to something divine, and even to connect with it daily, whether you want to or not. And that's what the Mass has come for them. Also, it's perhaps why they're okay or so drawn to a daily routine on the farm. And it's probably why I am. When I'm out there working on the farm and day in and day out, in a way, that's my sanctuary. And there's something to be said about doing something on good days and bad days, having a schedule and a routine that is higher and above oneself. There's something really rich in that. I noticed she didn't put any snacks in her stanchion, is that right? No, uh -uh. no she doesn't need that. Uh, in the winter, we'll sometimes put hay in there, but we never put grain or anything like that in there. She, she happy to come in to have the pressure of the milk taken off, so we don't have to put anything in there. How much you get? Ten. Ten what? Yeah. Then what? 10 pounds. Which is a little over a gallon. Yep, that's right. Like Sean connected the little taste of the glory with the mass of heaven. Perhaps farming, this is what it's really like. It's only a taste of the glory because we never arrive. We have all these goals, we have all these ideas, we never make it. There's always a mistake, there's always a failure, there's always one more thing to do. And what we really need to do is take a deep breath, take a step back, and just enjoy the ride. This is what I'm getting out of my visit with them, is that's the glory, that's the taste of the glory, and that's what we really need to be satisfied. And who knows, maybe we're gonna get to a uh, homestead in heaven, I don't know. The journey is the destination. Breaks all the rules of root cellars because it is on a south facing slope. It's not all that tightly burned, but it works anyway. Come on, you can come see it. So these potatoes are from last year. It'll, they'll keep us fed with potatoes from now till the end of July when we have new potatoes. And then the pigs will eat all the rest. Yeah. Um, here are mango wurzels. These are and actually- And you guys eat potatoes at every meal. That's right. So this is a mango. It's a small mango, but it's a mango wurzel, a big feed beet. They'll actually get to be about five, six times this big. This is our summer kitchen. If oh, you cool. Come, you can see. Because you don't have air conditioning. Right. right, right. Do you come out here and cook in the summer? Yep. Um, oh, this is for preservation. And stuff this is like for that. preservation and stuff. It's, right. it's, it's for can, right. And then like the guys hung a, hung a pig up here not that many okay. weeks ago to cool before they cut you it. You got your brooder. Right. So this is the where the cheese cave is. is in here. Okay, this By is just way, another basement. Up you <laughs> Look at this. You're proud of this. Oh yeah. Very. It's so wow. about, you were about, asking about rinds on cheese. This. So they just naturally go from this to this. And what you're doing is managing the surface of the cheese so that the mold, don't ask me why, but you want to rub it down when it starts to make fuzz like this. So I just come through. This is a very, very finicky scientific thing. You have to be extremely careful about germs, right? Uh -huh. So this, uh, um, I think I washed my hands recently, so this is probably all right. 
And I'm just There's rubbing down the molds. How often do you come down and rub down the molds? Uh, well, in theory, I would do this every week. In practice, how much if I forget, how much cheese do we? It, um, like a cheese like this, we'd go through really fast. This was this tiny one was because not all the curds would fit in this cheese, so I made a little one. But nice. a cheese like this is going to last us. Um, Couple of weeks. Depends on how many people so, are there and how much cheese they eat. You have 62 degrees in here. Right. And 75% humidity. Is that about right for cheese? Um, it's actually high temperature. Yeah. Um, you'll read, you know, like 55 degrees, kind of optimal, which is like, what is the temperature of the ground six feet down? About 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. We got a smoke house. Yeah. And then we got a playhouse. Yeah. And what's this? Maple syrup? Yeah, so Kitchen. It's a girl too. On here. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna feed the chickens with this buckwheat. Here, Dad, wait. So has it gone to seed? Are they gonna be eating the seed, or are they gonna be eating the greens? So this buckwheat is acting as a cover crop. There was a there was a Canada thistle problem in this bed anyway, so that's part of why these got elected for this. So if you crop. guys wanna, but we plant the buckwheat in this as soon as it's warm enough yeah. and let it grow like this. Yeah, we're we gonna lift. There you go, back. You got it. Okay, you want it further on, or is that okay, Anna? Go a little bit. Huh? Okay. There you go. So this is grown. This is the first growing of the buckwheat. Right. So this is, the first growing of the buckwheat. Right, so this is our cover crop that was planted in May. Um, you can see on the buckwheat down here whether it's setting oh, it's seed setting yet or not. And Anna's pointing out it isn't setting seed yet because none of these flowers down are, here are black. Are you purposely hitting it before it sets seed? No, normally we'd put them out here when it's setting seed and this, it's a little late this year, you but- can always put this off for we'll a just while. moving them up here. Right. Yeah, you're putting it here today. Right. When we put the chickens in wait. here, right, we could wait to put the chickens on and we may do that. Because what we want, when the, as the tractor moves across, it's gonna knock this crop down and the chickens are gonna scratch in it, tear it up, poop on it. It'll kill the plants that are here dead, but if this has set seed before we do this process, the seed will, what the chickens don't eat, will sift down to the dirt. The dirt stays cool because the knocked over plants are shading it. And so the first rain yeah. we get, all of that buckwheat's gonna germinate. Do you have to feed your chickens when they're in here? Yeah, so we feed our chickens um, fermented or sprouted wheat okay. and dairy waste, sometimes butchering Just awful. wheat. Just wheat. Just straight up wheat and straight your dairy waste so and this. That's right. And they do fine? And they do just fine. Sean, you're gonna have the strongest hands in this county. <laughs> Two times a day, did. my man. He already did. Look at his hands. They're about twice as big as a normal yeah. hand. The journey is the destination. So I'm searching hard and I'm finding better ways to enjoy that process. Sean, you ever get sick of milking every day? Uh, I don't think sick of it. It's a little bit, it's a little bit like going Easter egg hunting or hunting for eggs. You never know quite what you're gonna get, how much you're gonna get, and there's the excitement of that. There are definitely times when it gets too hot. What do you do on the real hot days to stay motivated? When you're doing a, a farm job, you know it lasts this long because that's what needs to happen. The dishes have to be cleaned, the milk has to be strained, so it can't just go on and on and on. So I think that's what is your, you focus a little bit on the end, <laughs> that I know it will be over soon. <laughs> we keep on grinding daily. In the end, the farm is getting better and it's getting more glorious. So we need to stop and enjoy that little taste or we miss it all. Thank you, Sean and Beth.